What's up, peeps? Thanks for tuning back into my channel. I got off of work early today, and I said, you know what? I'm going to cook me something real good, and I'm going to take y'all on this trip. It's kind of, kind of a keto-friendly meal, kind of not because it's cooked with red wine, but what it is is red wine braised short ribs, and I'm going to pair that up with mashed, with roasted garlic mashed uh, cauliflower. And I roasted the garlic myself, and I'm going to do the cauliflower, the mashed cauliflower from scratch. So maybe the cauliflower, the mashed cauliflower is a keto meal, but maybe not the, <laughs> maybe not the braised short ribs, but hey, I'm eating it anyway. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to take y'all along for the journey. I'm going to show y'all how this happened, how to go down, and how we stuff it in our mouths. Peace. Okay, now right here, I'm going to show you how I did the roasted garlic. You need some garlic. You need some type of oil. I'm here I'm using avocado oil. You can also use olive oil. You need salt and pepper, some aluminum foil. Go ahead and open your garlic cloves up. What you want to do is cut the very tip off. Try to expose the uh, cloves on the inside. Try to cut it a little better than I did. I almost cut my fingers off. But once you get them cloves exposed, go ahead and pour your oil on top. You don't, all you need is about a cap full, maybe even less than that. And after that, you put your salt and pepper on. And go ahead and close it up after that. You don't have to close it any type of way. I The way I close it is uh, so I can make tips at the top so they're easier to handle once you're pulling them out of the uh, oven. Once you get them all wrapped up, put them on a cookie sheet. Put them in the oven 350 for 30 minutes. Be careful taking them out. Let them cool because they are hot. They smell great. So go ahead and open them up. I could have did it the easier way by just squeezing it because it comes out like a paste anyway. So that's all I'm going to do is take each of these cloves out, mash them up, and then uh, turn them into a paste so I can add them to the cauliflower. Okay, now on to the meat. Okay, so this is what we're working with today. We got the short ribs, which I got the short ribs without the bone today. I didn't want the bone in them because the bone... Kind of takes up a lot of room. I mean, there is more flavor with the bone, though. I'll let you know that. With seasoning, I'm going to season with Mediterranean sea salt and black pepper. That's it. That's all I use for seasonings. When I do ribs, even when I do them on a smoker, the only thing I use is salt and pepper. It's just, that's all you need for, for short ribs. Okay, I'm going to use uh, avocado oil. Normally, I would use extra virgin olive oil, but I ran out. So I'm going to use this, which actually adds more fat. So like I said, on a keto diet, you need, you know, you get as much fat as you want. And for the vegetables, it's going to be celery, carrots, and onions. And uh, normally I'm not a big fan of celery, but when you put this in this dish and it cooks for about two hours, so they're so soft that you can't even, it's, they don't have that crunch to it, but it has that flavor of the celery and the uh, carrots. Okay, now about the wine, I got a funny story about the wine. So I looked it up on the internet, what wine is better to use with beef. And it said Cabernet, Pinot Noir. I'm not a wine drinker, so these words is like <laughs> foreign to me. Uh, Cabernet, Pinot Noir, and Merlot. So I'm in the store looking at each section. I got to the Merlot, Merlot section, Merlot section, and I didn't see anything. I got to the Cabernet section, I didn't see anything. So I got to the Pinot Noir section, and I seen a wine that really caught my attention. Seemed like it'd be a really, really, really good wine. So I, I went ahead and got this wine called Menage a Trois. So hopefully it do the beef as good as it does other things. So, <laughs> all right, let's get to cooking, man. Peace. Okay, one other thing I forgot you're going to need, about a half a stick of butter. I'll probably use a quarter of this before for the vegetables and about a quarter afterwards when I uh, get the sauce at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and season these up. I like to season on all sides because I plan on searing them on all sides. Let me tell you, if you don't have one of these big cast iron pots, need to get you one of these. Usually I'll take this and put it outside on the on the grill. But uh, today, uh, it's, it, it was raining when I came home earlier, so today we're just gonna put it in on the stove. And then from the stove, we're gonna
take it and stick it in the oven. Okay. So you want to get your olive oil. Your, look, I'm so used to saying olive oil. You want to get your avocado oil in here. Get that started up. And yes, I am using an electric stove. I'm sorry I don't have a gas stove, but hey, this is going to work today. Take a little bit of this butter and stick it in there. One thing you'll notice about following my channel, I love butter on everything. I'm a butter baby. So all this is just to get a sear on these uh on these short ribs. One thing about these cast irons, you got to take care of them. You got to keep them well oiled or it'll get rusty all on the inside. So one thing, when we put these short ribs in here, you don't want to cram them in there because when you cram them in there, it calls, it builds up a lot of moisture. Then you got a lot of liquid in there and it, you really can't get that good sear like you want. So I only put maybe, maybe four in here at a time so I can get a good solid sear on each side. In about a minute, I can, I'm not going to be able to do this because this whole pot will get hot. I know you want to try to get them all in there, but truthfully, ain't no rush. They're going to have to cook for about another two and a half hours after we do this on the stove. Now usually when I sear these, usually I'll dredge them in flour first, but because I'm trying to do, you know, get closer to keto friendly, I didn't put no flour on them, so we just want to rely on them like this.
Así, vas a ver una falta. Oh, ya. Es pretty color, I know. See that? A nice brown. I don't know if you can see that with the light in, but. some more light so you guys can see everything. As I said, try to get them on every side. Let's see if I can get them on that. You know, from all the different ways I cook, all the different styles I cook, I'm really learning a lot of lessons about searing first and then cooking afterwards. And, uh, It just, it just makes much better results when you see it in first. Okay, now remember what I said. He's got to cook for another couple hours. So I'm going to sit these back on here because they got to cook afterwards anyway. All right, I know you need to see y'all to sit and watch all of this. I'm going to get the other ones on here, get them off, and then we'll get our vegetables in there. Alright y'all, so we got those all seared up. Now we're going to add the vegetables in here. I added a little bit more butter, of course. Now we're not going to really let these get brown, we're just going to let them get maybe a little translucent. Such a pretty color. One thing I forgot to mention that we need also, some beef broth. So when we get this wine down and the wine reduces down, after the wine finishes reducing, we put the meat in there, we got to add the beef broth over there on top of the, uh, so it covers, just covers the meat. This stuff already smells good, man. I wish I could smell this. Alright, so we're going to get these translucent and we'll come right back. Alright y'all, so vegetables are getting translucent enough, so we're going to go ahead and add this wine in here. Add this menage a trois. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I was a little hyped for a minute there. But what they say about adding red wine to food, don't add a red wine that you wouldn't drink. So I had to try some of this, and uh, look, my pinky up. So I had to try some of this, because like I said, I'm not a, a wine drinker, but I would actually drink this maybe once <laughs> or twice maybe but I couldn't it, it's really dry but I know it's good for food but hey right. let's go ahead and get the wine in here okay so we're gonna add all the menage a trois we want all of this in there We're going to keep this on here, and what this is going to do, this wine is going to reduce down probably about halfway to maybe even three quarters. And then uh, then we'll go ahead and add the meat in there and then add the, uh, the beef broth. So I'll be back probably in about 10, 15 minutes maybe after this reduces down. Okay, as y'all can see, this red wine that reduced down probably about three quarters. That's more than half. It's about three quarters. It took about 20 minutes. So what we're going to do is go ahead and I'm going to add another piece of butter in there. Try to get 
try to deglaze, make sure none of that is on the is uh, getting stuck to the pan, to the pot. So go ahead and mix that up and go ahead and put this meat in here. Now we already didn't uh, got our oven heated, preheated for 350. I'm going to go ahead and add the meat in there. So that noise you hear is my oven preheating. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze all this meat in there. Make room for everybody. Yeah, this 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 menage a trois then turned into a uh never mind, never mind. I can't say that. I'm sorry, I might have drank too much of that wine, man. I'm sorry. I should have even thought about that. Okay, so we squeeze them all in there. We can go ahead and add that uh we're gonna add that beef broth in there. Just just on the top of the meat. You can always go back and add more if it's going down too fast, but I probably won't even check this for the first two hours. It's probably going to cook for about two and a half hours, close to three hours. But I won't even check it. I won't even check it for the first three hours. Okay, now the oven's ready, so. I'll get it just on the top. Now be careful, because this is hot. So, but I got a... Uh, I got rough hands, so I'll go ahead and pick this right up. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get this in the oven. What we're gonna do put it on the middle rack and uh, let it sit on there. Like I said, I, I'm not even gonna touch it for about two hours. Come out here and check and make sure the the, uh, the gravy is still at a good level. And then uh, if it's not, then I'll add some more in there. But uh, like I said, be careful because these cast irons get really hot. And uh, for this, we'll see in about two hours, but right now I'm gonna show y'all how we do the uh, the mashed cauliflower, roasted garlic. I just finished pulling the garlic out of there. I'll show you how what that looks like now. Okay, now to get started on this mashed cauliflower, first you need a big, fresh cauliflower. And mind you, this is my first time doing it, so bear with me. You need whatever seasoning you're gonna use. I'm gonna use salt, pepper, and this roasted garlic and mash butter mixture that I put together that I'm going to put in the mash. And then this is a potato ricer. What it is is it helps you mash, see them holes? It helps you mash the potatoes and it, the consistency it gives you for mashed potatoes is like the same all throughout the whole, the whole dish, you know, the mashed potatoes that you're making. A bowl to put everything in. Uh, and we're going to go ahead, and after I cut these, cut this, we're going to go ahead and steam it. Best way to start this off is probably to cut it in quarters. That way it's easier to separate the stem from the, uh, from the florets. So, cut it in fours. Okay. Yeah, if you don't cut this right, this can make a big mess. But you can pretty much see where the stems separate from the florets. Take this big piece off. All you want to do is go in there, go in there from an angle, and that way you can get all that. 
Make sure you put it on a cutting board though. Don't hold it in the air like I just tried to do. Hey, that's good enough. Go ahead and break it up and stick it in your bowl. It's all gonna get mashed up anyway, so. That's it. That's all you want to do. What you want to do, don't you want to try to keep the pieces the same size, so they'll so they'll uh, steam evenly. But I just I just messed that all up. But anyway, I'm going to get the rest of these and I'll be back with you. That's pretty much what you want it to look like. I mean, they're not all even, but I mean, close enough. So we're gonna go ahead and get this on the steamer. Okay, so right before I put them in the steamer, I went ahead and rinsed them off and put them in here. You want them to steam for about 8 to 10 minutes. And once they get about fork tender, then you know they're ready. So, y'all know this is my first try with this potato rice here. I went ahead and loaded it up. And uh, on this first go-round, what I didn't know was that a lot of liquid comes out of cauliflower. So, I went ahead and let that liquid come out, drained it, and then uh, poured that liquid out. Went ahead and started squeezing the cauliflower out of the ricer. And if you see the consistency that comes out of there, man, it's almost just like mashed potatoes. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this, and then I'll show you what it looked like when it was all done. All right, so this is what it looked like. Consistency is not like mashed potatoes, but I mean, it's close enough, man. We're talking about cauliflower. Now, this is the roasted garlic and butter that I mixed together. That stuff smelled so good. I went ahead and put that in there and seen the consistency. I was like, man, let's just put it all in there. Put it all in there. So I went ahead and add that in there. The smells that's coming off of this thing is crazy. It really smells like mashed potatoes. Right at the end here, I had a whole cup of half and half ready for this, but I only end up needing just a little bit of it because I had to realize it's not going to get that consistency of mash. So I just put a little bit and we're ready for these uh, ribs now. There you go. That meat just look tender. I'm going to go ahead and get this plated up, let y'all know how it tastes. All right, y'all, so I made a rookie mistake. I forgot to turn the mic on during this part. So I'm gonna just go ahead and guide y'all through this whole thing. And the smells that was coming off of this food was like no other. When I stuck that fork in that meat, it just it just was so tender. You could feel it breaking up. I was breaking it up with the, with the fork. So I got some on that fork and I was like, man, let me get some of that with that cauliflower. So I went ahead and took me a nice big bite of that. Man, it's like, it's like heaven. When you work so hard on something, it's, it's first time you trying something out and uh, comes out as a success, it's all worth it in the end, man. Definitely worth it. You can see me smiling on the inside. But uh, yeah, this was, this was a video worthy meal. I felt that. But uh, anyway, I appreciate y'all checking me out again. Sorry this video turned out so long, but this was a pretty long cook. But uh, stay with me. Like, subscribe, share, and uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Peace.